17 years old Donald McDonald and 21 years old Jack Ferguson decided to go elk hunting in December of 1949. Both men had been living in the greater Walla Walla area and had great hunting experience. The two were hunting in a ridgeline called Black Snake Ridge. It was a cold weather and Jack was leading the way. As they were looking for elks, Jack saw one, took a shot and hit the elk, so they started to track the wounded animal. Jack was concentrating on the blood in the snow and he finally found the dead animal. When he turned back to speak to Donald, he couldn't find him. Jack started shouting his name with no response. He traced back the path he took to reach the animal in the hope he finds his friend, but he had no success. Jack gutted the elk and brought it back to the camp that he and Donald had set up. He searched for two days and after not finding anything, he went to the Walla Walla County Sheriff's Office and reported his hunting partner as missing. The county sheriff, local rangers, family and friends all searched for Donald for a week, but they didn't find anything. It's worth noting a snowstorm hit the area the day Donald went missing. Searchers never found his rifle or any clothes. There were few abandoned cabins in the area and searchers checked them all, but there was no evidence the cabins had recently been used. After one week of looking for Donald and not finding a single trace of him, they terminated the search effort. In June of 1950, six months after Donald went missing, the county sheriff did another search in the hope of finding at least Donald's body or belongings. But they had no success. Donald McDonald was never found. Two years after Donald McDonald's disappearance and two miles apart, on October 14, 1951, 14 years old Bobby Boatman went to Godman Springs of Idaho with two other adult friends and got lost in the mountains while hiking with them. His other two friends searched for him the day he went missing and didn't find anything. In the morning of the next day, they reported Bobby as missing to the county sheriff. It's worth mentioning Bobby was a part of a boy scout and he had survival skills. The weather got so bad when volunteers started their search that all communications in the search group was getting interrupted regularly. Searchers were waist deep in the snow searching for Bobby. They searched for two weeks and didn't find a single trace of him. On October 9, 1956, almost five years after Bobby went missing, some hunters found a rifle and a red cap in the Blue Mountains. The rifle was 30 caliber Remington. The sheriff took the rifle and the cap to Bobby's friends and they confirmed they were Bobby's belongings. The searchers who found the cap and the rifle stated it was as if Bobby dropped his belongings and started running. The sheriff went to the location, hunters found the rifle and the cap in the hope of finding the body of Bobby or what's left of it. Very strangely, the sheriff found Bobby's bones and clothing under a tree roots covered with dirt. The bones were found 100 yards from where the rifle and the cap were located. The sheriff believed someone placed the body under the tree roots and then animals took the body out. The sheriff also stated in 1952 they found Bobby's knife and its sheets plus the rope that Bobby was using close to a riverbed a great distance from where they found the bones and clothing of Bobby. Someone had to take Bobby's knife and rope from the body and carry them to where they found them. If this was a calculated killing and the killer didn't want people to find the body, why didn't he bury the rifle and the cap with the body under the tree roots? That would have had much lesser chance of being found. Also, why would he take the knife, its sheet and the rope off the body and leave them close to a riverbed that can easily be found? Both Bobby Boatman and Donald McDonald were disappeared close to ridgelines. 
What happened to Bobby remains a mystery to this day. Thirty-three years old, Patrick Whalen loved the outdoors. He used to constantly travel around and visit new places. He really enjoyed visiting Glacier National Park, especially a land owned by the Blackfeet Native American Reservation. In early November of 2000, Patrick's father called Glacier Park officials and told them he hadn't heard from his son for some time now and he was worried if he's okay or not. Rangers had not had recent contact with Patrick, but they had lots of encounters with him few weeks before Patrick's father call. On November 2nd, 2000, Patrick hit a deer. Witnesses claim he put a pillow under the deer's head, placed a blanket over it, and left food near its mouth. Once he hit the deer, he abandoned his truck and left to backpack into Glacier National Park. Rangers didn't hear from Patrick until May 10, 2001, when Patrick's father again called the Glacier National Park officials and said he hadn't heard from his son for a long time. On May 27, 2001, a ranger was hiking with another former employee in the Atlantic Creek campground when she found an abandoned backpacking equipment in a campsite. She found a tent that was partially falling down, but it was obvious it was there through the winter. The tent was a blue ray brand that had all zippers closed and no tears on it. Rangers found a pair of boots, a wool hat, middens, a pack, underwear, shorts, foods, a water bottle, and a commercial driver's license belonging to Patrick Wellen. The most unusual find was an empty buck knife case. The two rangers took photos of the site and hung the foods so bears can't get to it. They couldn't make contact with national park officials, so they hiked out of the campground and contacted the headquarters. She clearly stated in her report that she didn't feel the campground was ran over by a bear or any other animal. Investigators came to the area and did a true search to find clues. They also realized Patrick's truck was towed six months earlier and it was still in the towed company. Investigators went to check the truck but had no success in finding any clues. On May 30th, officials brought in search dog teams to the scene to see if there is any human body in the area, but they didn't find anything. There are speculations that Patrick heard something suspicious outside the tent at night. He got up took his knife and went outside to check what was going on. He closed the tent behind him so no bugs could enter, and something bad happened to him that he never returned. He wasn't going for a long hike since rangers found water bottles, map, filters and boots close to the tent. It's worth noting that at this time people weren't allowed to carry firearms in national parks, but that has changed since. Rangers never found a scene indicating Patrick was attacked by an animal. There was no scene of fighting for life around the tent. Patrick Whalen was never found.